Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Welcome back to the Unity 5 RPG tutorial. In this video, we're going to be doing the warp transitions between scenes. Now, I've gone ahead and loaded up the scenes that I created um, earlier. These were my my own uh, test scenes that I was working with. Now, there are still some uh, Z ordering issues with these scenes. I haven't had time to go back and change them, but just make sure that when you're working with your scenes, like we did with the demo scene in the earlier videos, to get your Z depth and ordering correct otherwise your player will walk on top of things that they shouldn't walk on top of anyway let's get started with this uh, with this tutorial so the first thing we're going to need to do um, in my game I'm starting off in our little house we're going to go down to the door which is going to take us over to this uh, spot right in front of the door of the house and then you know you can walk through the forest in the second scene there might be some monsters and in this third scene over here this is you know the path to the king's castle where there might be some sort of, I'm not sure yet, but you know, some kind of evil creature defending the exit. And then once you make the exit, that will be the end of end of our game. Um, very simple RPG, very simple scope. It's really just designed to, to create a level and a way that I can explain things to you guys. Um, so, like I said, let's get started. So the first thing we need is a, a way to detect when the player has reached this exit. Uh, this point of exit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my my group for the home map and I'm going to add a new uh, empty to that. I'm going to call this uh, exits like that. Actually, I might rename that. I might call that warp exit exits. There we go. And then I'm going to create another empty underneath that. So I'm just going to select create empty and I'm going to call this main door. So from the main door object, I'm going to select add component, and this is going to be of type um, uh, box collider 2D. This is going to give us a, a way to detect when the player has actually collided with this object. So now just move and position this box collider, uh, the actual transform for main door, so that it sits on top of these uh, carpets here, and I'm just going to adjust the scale. It doesn't need to be super big, it just needs to be so in a place like that so that when the player comes down and hits this it will fire the um, on trigger enter 2d event and we can use that event to move our player throughout the world from this point the next thing we need to do is add a uh, a target so i'm going to come down to forest one i believe that's this one here i'm just going to reorder that uh maybe i won't reorder it it's going to be kind of complicated to do that oh, i'll just leave it where it is so i'm going to come down to forest one I'm going to select create empty and I'm going to call this empty uh, warp targets. Now in warp targets, uh, it doesn't matter where this is, just make sure it's position zero. I'm going to create an empty inside of that and I'm going to call this one here front door for front door target. Now I'm going to move and position this front door object just so that it sits down here just below the front door of this house. That's where our player will spawn when they warp onto this map. So now we've got a collider that we can use to detect when the player has left the map and also a target that we can use to determine when the player has, um, where the player needs to go once we hit that target. We can do the same thing in reverse. I'm going to create another group underneath this uh, forest and I'm going to call this warp exits. And I'm going to create another object underneath that. And that object is going to be called uh, front door, same as the same as the target, just so that we know where it is. I'm going to position that, you know, on top of the front door, and I'm going to add a box collider 2D to that, and then just adjust the sizes so that they match, uh, roughly match, doesn't need to be perfect, but just, you know, roughly match that front door. So the player will hit that object, triggers the um, collision event from within our script, and then it goes and finds the appropriate target. So within our player home, I'm going to create an empty called warp target, there we go warp targets that's back up here in this in this place and I'm going to create an empty underneath warp targets I'm going to call this one uh, front door is that what I called it for the exit oh, I called it main door here so I'll just call this one main door there we go main door move and position that so that it's just you know in the middle of the of the of the two tiles it's about there and also make sure that the player doesn't collide with the with the exit when they land on this um, on this entrance now we can get into the fun stuff and that's writing the script. So I'm going to come down to our scripts folder where we've got camera follow and player movement. I'm going to create a new C-sharp script. Whoops, didn't mean to click show and explorer. 
I'm going to create a new C sharp script. This script is going to be called warp. I'm going to open that up in mono develop. Might take just two seconds for that to load up. And then what we can do is we can start to work on how this how this warp system will work. So every object that contains a component of warp is going to need to have a uh, a target, but that's basically a transform for where we're going. So I'm going to say public transform transform representing the positional information. Uh, I'm going to call this one here warp target. There we go. Um, and I think that is pretty much all we need actually. We can get rid of the start and update functions because we don't need to use those. What I will do is I will say void on trigger enter 2D. That's going to take a parameter of collider 2D and other. So this is going to be the object that collides with the trigger that this object is attached to. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to put a debug debug.log just so we can see something happened. We'll say an object collided. Save your script, go back to your game, and we're going to add this to the warp exit objects. So under main door, uh, so warp exit, main door inside the player house, I'm going to drag on a warp object, and I'm going to do the same thing for the, for the forest one warp exit front door. I'm going to add the same script to that as well. Um, so from within, uh, if we save our script first, we'll make sure that's saved and probably also build that to make sure it's compiling. There we go, we had an error. Make sure that you always have a semicolon on the end of your lines or it won't work. So once that's been um, saved and built, go back into Unity and you should see warp target now appears underneath this script. So within uh, our main door from our house, we need to set the warp target to be the target in the forest one uh, map, which is going to be, if we open up warp targets, it's going to be this object here. So player home warp exit main door, drag your front door target to that object. Hope that made sense. Now from the, from the forest one, I mean, these are going to be different for your games, but um, the concept remains the same. So from my warp exit front door, I'm going to drag the main door warp target. So what we've essentially done is create a link from the collider in our house to the warp target on our forest and a link from the collider on our forest to the warp target on our home. Now we'll just verify that this is all working by running the game. And if I run down and hit this, hit this uh, collider, you'll see nothing happens. That's because I forgot one crucial step that our player needs to have a uh, collider attached to it. So if you click on your player object, just select add component and add a circle collider for your player. Circle collider 2D, there it is. Now if we zoom down on our player, we should be able to see the circle collider. Uh, where is the radius? There it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my radius like 0.14, just slightly smaller than the border of our player. Um, we don't want it to overextend the player and we also don't want it to be so small that, you know, the player has to be halfway through an object in order for a collision to happen. So I'm just going to say 0.14. And now if we run the game, what we should see as we exit this map here is that we physically collide with the box collider. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I forgot one more step. Those box colliders need to be set to triggers. Open up your player home, go to your warp uh, exits, which is the collider object and make sure that it's set to is trigger is set to true and do the same thing for your other one. So the warp target, which is going to be this one over here needs to be a trigger. What a trigger does is it allows the, it allows an object to basically pass through it. And once the object, so rather than physically colliding and stopping the object, any object that has a collider attached to it can pass through this object, but it will fire this function on trigger enter 2D only once. So rather than continuously firing that function and blocking the movement, it allows you to pass through it and it fires that trigger function only once. It says, hey, something collided with me. And it never does it again until you leave and collide again. And I'll demonstrate what that means just by doing this. There you go. So you see, if we open up our debug, it says an object collided. If we do it again, it will say an object collided. And as we stand inside it, you see this doesn't keep happening. That's because this is a trigger. It only happens once. So that basically allows us to detect when something has collided with the trigger. So I'm going to stop my game now. It's going to save my project real quick. Okay, 
Now that we have our warp targets uh, all set up correctly and our warp triggers set up correctly, so these are our exits, I've just called them exits instead of triggers, doesn't really matter what you call them as, as long as you know what it is, uh, jump back into our uh, mono develop and in our on trigger enter 2D function from our warp C sharp, we now know that something has collided with the trigger. We can then say, um, this, is, this is where we can basically manipulate our player a little bit. We can basically say, other, so we say other dot game object. That's and that's going to represent the game object that collided with this trigger. Um, dot transform equals warp target. Warp target. There we go. And the other thing we need to do is move our camera. So we can also say uh, camera dot main dot transform equals warp target. Now what this is going to do, hopefully you understand how this is working already. This is a very simplified example of these warps. We'll be doing a more complicated example that uses uh, coroutines and screen fading. So the screen will fade out and fade back in. But just, just to get the warp system up and running for now, we're gonna be using the simpler version. Um, so basically what happens is when you collide with the trigger, it goes and adjusts your position to the destination, which is the warp target. And it also moves the camera to the warp target as well. So if I save this script, I'll just build it to make sure that everything is working correct. Um, oh, sorry, transform.position. There we go. Transform.position. I have to put that in there. Uh, warp target, I think. Just rebuild that. No, warp target dot position. Dot position. There we go. You can't assign the uh, transforms to another transform. That would cause some sort of reference error. So basically, sorry about that. It's uh, transform dot position equals warp target dot position, and then camera dot main dot transform dot position equals warp target dot position. So now if we run our game with all the references set up correctly, what should happen when we exit the front door is that we'll get transported immediately to the outside of the house and vice versa, we'll get transported back to the inside of the house. And I'll just zoom out so you can see what's happening on our map. If I zoom to about this level, you should see our player appearing over here. There it is. As we enter this, you see that we've been transported to the front door. Now all of your, because this is all happening within one scene, all of your state remains the same. So you don't have to worry too much about, you know, maintaining state across scenes, things like that. But if you did want to go into a cross scene situation, it's not too hard to modify this code to work across scenes, which we'll probably end up doing in the extras. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, in the next video, we'll be doing the screen fade out and fade in system and tying that into this, uh, into this warping system. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, catch you in the next video. Bye for now.